and then once this gets to 10, Winning cures everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. It is the Tuesday, March 19th edition of the show. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And we are doing this live. We will see how this goes. Uh, obviously, internet up here, not great, but we're going to let it run. We're going to do our thing, and it is recording, so we can uh, we can post it later if the live stream was terrible. So... Uh, rundown of today's show. Obviously, NCAA brackets are out. We're going to go over our picks. Uh, we will obviously be recording on Thursday and Friday. Broadcasting live from Samstown Casino in Tunica. The show brought to you by, uh, there it is right there, Tunica, Mississippi. <laughs> the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them at tunicatravel.com. So if you are coming to hang out with us, at Samstown this Thursday and Friday, March 21st, March 22nd. You will be able to go and do basically anything in Tunica if you want to. You can watch basketball with us for a bit and then go over to tunicatravel.com and figure out what else they got to offer down there because it is a whole lot of stuff. I'm sure you agree with that, right? Yeah, all the different casinos have many different things to offer. Many, many different things to offer. Um, So, the rundown today, NCAA Brackets. We're going to talk about Mike Trout's new contract, and we haven't talked about Bryce Harper's really. Yeah, we can get into all so, those things. Yeah, we'll get into all that with baseball coming up and whatnot. Uh, first official game is tonight, by the way. You realize mm, that? Not really, but okay. I mean, it counts towards the standings. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's in Japan, and it's what two thirty a.m. Pacific time. I think so. so. It's like four thirty a.m. Central time. So. So nobody in the world will be able to watch it. Nobody will be able to see it whatsoever, and that'll be okay. Uh, we're going to do a little college football talk. Uh, the opening college football lines at Bet Online came out, and there's 45 games of the year that they say. So we're, we're going to discuss some of those, uh, along with Kansas being sued by their former coach. We're going to get into NFL free agency and Johnny Manziel in Memphis. As always, you can follow us online on Twitter. I'm at GaryWCE. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. You can follow the show at Winning Cures. Or we're on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything, um, winningcureseverything.com. That's the best way to go. There you like go. It's got everything you need. Subscribe on YouTube. Share the show out. Subscribe to the podcast. That's the biggest thing. Subscribe to the podcast. You can get it delivered right to your phone. Super easy. Let's jump into the first topic. First one up, NCAA College basketball March Madness tournament. I'm so excited for this. I can't even begin. Obviously, you guys have followed the show for a little while. I've been doing daily gambling picks on college basketball all season. I am over 54%, and that's just against the spread. That doesn't include units or anything like that, but I have made a killing. There you go. A, an absolute killing. I have more than quadrupled my, my bankroll. That so I, I had a different bankroll for another another thing, um, but since January it has it's quadru- it's four times what it was. That sounds pretty good. I feel like I've I've done pretty well this year. And so fifty four percent is not great. It's not like all timer kind of thing, but based on what you put your units for and all that, you know, is what it is. Uh, we already got somebody popping in. David Savinell on Facebook. Y'all going to Nashville for the NFL draft? Don't know yet. Yeah, we're, we're still working on that. We'll see what happens. Um, but before we get to the NFL draft stuff, which we're not going to talk about tonight, but we're going to talk about free agency, let's go over the picks. You want to start in the East region? Yeah, that's fine. Where, wherever you want to start, I'm good with. All right, the East regional. Let's, let's talk about that. Um, da, 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 there we go. East regional. Is any, like, can a 16 seed beat Duke? No. Okay, easy enough. Duke moves on. VCU UCF. Who you got rolling on this one? So I'm I'm going with the American. I'm going with with UCF. Okay. So I'm going with VCU. All right. Uh, their their defense is unreal. Their their star player is going to be back. So they say. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with that. But even if he's not, their defense is still unreal. And 
it, they pressure a lot, going to be a lot of fouling. UCF sucks from the line. They are well, terrible from the free throw line. So I'm that, going VCU. That, that might be good. That might be true. In the bracket style, it does not matter. No, because, because they're playing Duke next. They're going to get smoked by Duke. All right, so we, we got Duke in the Sweet 16, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Mississippi State Liberty. A lot of people think that this is a a, a bracket buster kind of game. Uh, I think I think a lot of people outside of where we live think that. I don't know a lot of people around here think it because they watch more Mississippi State games than – Nationwide people. I'm, yeah. I'm going to bet your average fan not in the SEC world has maybe seen Mississippi State play one or two games. And I bet they've probably seen Liberty play less than that. Well, yeah, but you're always looking for upsets, and so you think, oh, I haven't heard anything about State. Oh, let's just pick an upset. Yeah, I, I will tell you this. I picked a couple of upsets just based off, I don't know a lot about this team this year. I'm just picking the dog. That makes sense. So Makes sense. All right, so I've got State going through. You got State. I got State going through. All right, uh, Virginia Tech, St. Louis. St. Louis got in because they won the A-10 uh, tournament. So they were a bid stealer, 13 seed against a four. Dickens Justin Tech. Robinson's coming back. Uh, no, no, St. Louis oh. beat. Uh, uh, that was St. Mary's. Mary's. Yeah, St. Louis. St. Uh, Louis beat Rhode Island My mother would or St. Bonaventure. I think it was uh, either one. I think, oh, yeah, it was it was uh, St. Bonaventure. So, look, Travis Ford. Was at Oklahoma State, now at St. Louis. He's got the Billikens back in the tournament. This St. Louis team, not that great. Free throw percentage, worst in the entire field. They shoot 59% from the free throw line. Their defense is great, but Virginia Tech is basically a top 10 team with Justin Robinson. I, I'm going Vitek here. So, I'm, I'm the same way in the sense of I, they played in the ACC. They played good teams all year. Very stacked, strong conference. They're they're they've been tested. I just don't see the teams that that are in the strong conferences play a lot of hard games. They tend to not get upset by these smaller teams. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next one up, Maryland and either Belmont or Temple. That game is later tonight. I've got Belmont going through. I think I, um, the same way. I got Belmont beating Temple, and I got Belmont beating Maryland. I've got the exact same thing. I I, I, I can't like, believe Maryland made the tournament. Well, and I can't even believe they're a six seed. Like no, I, Maryland, like I mean, the twenty-two and ten, they had a really tough schedule. They got a lot of quad one and quad two wins. Like see, that's a good basketball you're, team. You're going to get into all that stuff. Look, I watched a couple of games. I, we all know I don't start watching basketball until until after, like February, until after the Super Bowl, um, and then and it's usually the week after the Super Bowl because I need a little defrag time. And uh, they, I, I saw a couple of Big Ten games with them. They didn't look impressive. Okay. Now, it could be the fact that the times that they were on TV and I got to watch them, they were playing much better teams. Michigan, Michigan State, you know, I, uh, oh, Iowa, I think. And, yeah. And then, like, yeah, it's just they didn't impress me. That's okay. And that makes sense. I, I mean, I, I've obviously been wrong before. They, they are an inconsistent team. They are well coached, but sometimes they go a little brain dead. So see, I, so I, I can see them getting a beat. People quick. in the D.C. area that are. Big Maryland people, and they don't think they're well coached. They actually think that if they get knocked out, coach, it'll be because of. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Now that's local people. Not you know, maybe they have unrealistic expectations. I don't know the answer to that. Mark I'm Turgeon was was at Texas A and M before he went to Maryland, and he's been there for what eight nine years now. So it kind of makes sense. Like so. And Turgeon is never going to be able to do what Gary Williams did, well, which was pro- win a national championship. And it also you hurts know? that the people that I listen to are close personal friends with Gary Williams. Yeah, that so makes sense. Their standards a little high. A li- just a touch. <laughs> a little high. Let's talk about uh, about your boys here, uh, LSU. Take them down. Tigers. Tigers going to beat the hell out of Yale. All right, I've got LSU beating the, Yale. I- the Ivy League has not seen anything with this kind of athleticism. You know Yale's got like some NBA like a, talent. Yeah, they, whatever. That's fine. And they, I, I think that they hadn't played against other NBA talent. I'll tell you the I'll go on and give y'all something before we broadcast live on Thursday because we're we're talking spreads and, and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Then that, we'll be getting more into um, individual games. Because right now we're doing a bracket. That line opened up at ten. Yep. I grabbed it at nine. It is at like seven now. So it well, does I'll, make me a little wary. I'll, I'll be I'll be playing my tiger. I, I could understand that because the public jumped all over that thing. Um, all right, so I'm sure it's because Will Wade's not there, and 
Yeah, I mean, that's trying, that's they, 100% they, they, the reason. You know, you saw Arizona just come in flat last year coming off all this stuff. Yeah. Two totally different teams. I think I think you're probably right. Um, it, let's move back up. Mississippi State and Virginia Tech. Who have you got in the uh, in the oh, Sweet Sixteen? Oh no, let's just let's just do the first round. Oh, and then let's and then go the back. First up. round, okay. then we'll go through the next round. All right, let's do that. Louisville and Minnesota. Love this game. This is my favorite first round game of the tournament. It's the uh, the Patino Bowl. I love it. So love it, Richard it. Patino, coach of Minnesota, against his dad's former team. Richard actually was an assistant at Louisville. Yes, sir. Uh, then took the the Minnesota job from there. Uh, they maybe. Didn't have to make this matchup, but it definitely makes it more entertaining. There, right? there is no doubt the way they made these brackets, they did not care. One iota, who deserved what, they were trying to get matchups. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, who you got? I got Louisville. I got Louisville, too. I, I thought really hard about Minnesota, right? But Louisville as a favorite just hammers teams. I, I go I go a little bit the other way in the sense of I think it's everyone says, oh, this is Patino gonna get some revenge for his dad. His dad was a scumbag. His dad absolutely deserved everything that he got. And I think this is <laughs> Louisville players gonna be like, you know what? No, no, no. We're classing the joint up, and by classing the joint up, we're gonna beat the hell out of Patino. Well, and on top of that, I, Chris Mack, obviously a lot of tournament experience with Xavier. I think he knows how to coach in the NCAA tournament. I like Louisville in this Me spot. Too. I mean, um, so many people are picking that upset. Yeah. I've, I've heard umpteen people. Well, because Louisville, like, it, in, in end-of-game situations this year against oh, yeah. really good teams, right. they have absolutely crapped the bed. And But that's against Duke that's and Virginia say, Tech we're, and we're, Florida State. We're, we're and, talking about a different class of team. Minnesota well, might be good. We're also talking about a 10 seed and a 7 seed. That's like, right. There's a reason they're, they're rated right. so low. Uh, Michigan State, Bradley. Yeah, no question. No question here. Well, what, what do I do every year? What do I do every year? You just pencil in Izzo to the Final I, Four. I take Izzo, and I draw him all the way to the Final Four. And then and I then, figure the rest of the bracket out. That makes sense. That makes sense. I do the same thing with, with Roy Williams in North Carolina. I just find him, and I say, here. All right, now let me look at who plays where. Now that you have uh, a little teaser for how the rest of this bracket's going to go. For me, yep. So Duke and VCU, we both got Duke in the Sweet 16. Yeah, um, I, got, I got UCF, but it doesn't matter. I got Duke going. Uh, Mississippi State, Virginia Tech. I'm very much looking forward to this game. I hope we get this matchup. I got State going. Vitek scares me, man. Uh, yeah, that's a really, really good – I've got Virginia Tech in, it in wouldn't the Sweet shock, it, it would not shock me at all if Virginia Tech beat State. It wouldn't shock me if Virginia Tech beat Duke. Now that that would shock me. I'm, I'm telling you, this is a fantastic team. Don't disagree with that. Um, all right, so Virginia Tech there, Belmont, LSU. I'm going to both g- have Belmont. It, it, oh, you got Belmont beating no, LSU. No, we both have Belmont. We both have LSU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just making sure we both have the same matchup. Yes, yeah, same okay. matchup. Belmont, LSU. I've got Belmont. No, that no, you just yeah, LSU's on the FU tour. <laughs> <laughs> we're, burning, we're burning bridges, baby. We're just taking people down. All right, and Louisville, Michigan State. I've got Michigan State. Obviously, you got Izzo I've, in the Final I've Four. Got Izzo so. in the Final Four. There you go. Um, all right, so here is our Sweet 16 matchups. We got Duke against either Mississippi State or Virginia you got Tech. Against Vitek, I got them against I got them against. We both have Duke in the. And it does not matter. I think Duke beats them both. That makes sense. Uh, and then I've got Belmont. You've got LSU, but we both have Michigan it State does not in the matter. Elite. This is where the fires get put out. That makes sense. Tom Izzo has – well, let's just go on. So now we both got Duke against Michigan State, who everybody in the country says this is the biggest screw job of them all. Yeah. In essence, they made Michigan State the eighth seed in this thing. Yeah. Yeah. They basically. beat Michigan three times, and Michigan well, they, they technically don't... gets the fifth seed in the bracket. Michigan has to go out to – Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I, don't, I don't care where to they the have West to fly to. I don't care. Oh, well, they had to travel for bull. I don't – none of that matters. I, I agree with you because, like, you're telling me the difference from Michigan – like, from East Lansing to Washington, D.C. is what? Maybe 200 miles closer than it is to Anaheim? Yeah. I mean, give me a break. So so here's here's my – also my thought on it. I don't give a damn. I think Izzo has had a couple of years where he's had big letdowns in tournaments. Now, he's also had a couple of years where he didn't have very good teams in – he got the most he could out of them. I think he's got a good team. I think they're healthy. 
and I think he's on a mission this year. I think Michigan State takes down Duke. This is the other thing I think if I was going to make Duke lose a game, they were going to lose the second game of the weekend because I do think Zion's going to have to play two games back-to-back and then take a week off and then play two games back-to-back and then take a week off and then play two games back-to-back in order for them to win. I think if Duke goes down, it will be the second game of the back-to-backs of the weekend. That's pretty, you're probably that's, right. That's my logic on it. Um, I, I, I just think he can only carry them so far, and the rest of that team, if he's not a monster, they are beatable. Oh, very beatable. They they have the worst three-point percentage of anybody oh, in the field. They're, they're, they're 30.2%. Uh, nobody has ever even made the Final Four shooting that from three. And, yes, Michigan State. Now, now I've got Duke in the Final Four, but that's more because I've – felt like so many people around me are going Michigan State. I think they all see the same thing, though. But, there, I mean, there's a ton of people that have Duke going. So, oh, I would but say like, Duke's probably the number one um They are. It's like 40, for, 45% yeah, for of, the, like of every bracket have them winning it all. Um, I don't have them winning it all. I'm going to tell you that. I do have Duke in because I think that their talent is just unbelievable. But I don't think that you can win a national championship – Relying so heavily on freshmen and not being able to shoot the three. See, I, it's not even the freshman that scares me. It's relying so heavily on one person. I know it's, they've got two other guys that are going to be top five picks, and they got another guy picks. that'll that'll probably be drafted. You know, with, with I, I know that. I saw this team a lot without Zion, and then I saw him through the SEC, uh, the, the ACC tournament with Zion. And I'm going to tell you this: he had to be a monster oh, yeah. for them to beat North Carolina. And he had to be a monster for them to beat Florida State. Well, he had to be unreal for them to beat Syracuse. Like oh, Syracuse that's right. kept that's it right. within twelve. That's right. Syracuse gave uh, him a run for a while. The other side of this is is Izzo has never beaten Coach K. I don't care about never. Long-term. I mean, he's you, he's you know how over. I feel about you know how I feel about trends that go back I thirty years. I don't I don't give a damn. This I can team understand is it. different. Okay. I okay. also think this. Some of this, the fact that Duke has played so poorly with Zion being out. Coach K's got to wear that. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is literally one guy carrying you. You got three other NBA players out here. No other team has that kind of talent if you take Zion off the team. And you were getting worked by people. Oh, yeah. That's on you, Coach K. I agree. I agree. Uh, Let's move down to the West Regional. Gonzaga, Fairleigh Dickinson, or Prairie View, which one of my picks tonight was Prairie View plus three and – on my way over here to the studio, Prairie View was up 13 to 6. I felt pretty good about that. All right. Um, so I, at that point, I'm what, like plus 10? Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. So I, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going Gonzaga first round. Gonzaga. Next up, Syracuse and Baylor. We going Syracuse? Yes. Yeah, we're going uh, uh, Buddy Bayheim. That's uh, That was the matchup I wanted to see in the ACC tournament. That he's Buddy against Zion. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was good. <laughs> Syracuse just – when you don't play against this zone, it just tears teams up. This yeah. is why they do so well in tournaments. And they don't always do so well in the ACC tournament, but those teams see them twice a year. Yeah. But when you get into this tournament and you've never played against it all year or it's been a long time since you've gone against it, you watch all the film you want. It does not prepare the players for what actually comes at them. Scott Drew, head coach of Baylor, one and eight against single digit seeds in the tournament. Oh no! Yeah. Well, and like I said, I don't know that this is going to be a knock on him so much as no coach consistently has has gotten through this uh, uh, the zone defense that they run without it being an elite level team. I agree. I agree. Next up, Marquette Murray State. We got the John Morant and uh, and Marcus uh, Howard show. So th- though there's a big part of me that feels like I'm falling into the world's biggest trap. It's the five twelve, and and John Morant is the second coming to you know I don't know Christ or something, and, and he is amazing, and I love watching him. It's the reason I have Murray State going. But, I've got Murray State as well, but, really, but the reasoning but listen, behind it is Murray State is on fire, and, and Marquette Mar- has not. looked awful. But Marquette is healthy now. Here's what scares me about this: Marquette is healthy now. Well, do, do you know that they're healthy? I mean, yeah, the, okay. my, the the only player that matters for Marquette is Marcus Howard. That's it, and he's healthy. 
but but he wasn't in their last game that they lost. Uh, I don't know. It's been a long time. I mean, they got beat by that? Seton Hall. And it was like this past. Ago? It was this past weekend. We, okay. All right. So it's a week. How, how long are these people out for? He's had a hurt wrist for right. games this now. Guy, he's still an NBA talent. If, and it's his shooting if, wrist. If he's good and he's own, Mark hits a better team than Murray State. They just are. Yeah, no, now, they, John absolutely. Morant is the best player on the floor. That's why I'm going with him. I can't believe they this were is, a 12 you, seed. You know the, the one shining podcast thing? Yeah. Uh, it, t- no, Titus was talking about the, uh, the Kimba effect. So uh, KB's jumping in. Video feed cutting in and out. Sound okay. Okay. Yeah, it, it happens. It'll be okay. Um, Thanks, KB. Let's see. Murray State, yes, it's it's all John Morant, right? But, all John Morant. And they were a 12 seed because they their schedule was so light. It, 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 deservingly so. I My fear is, is this is the most popular pick there is. Vegas just – there's going to be so much money on Murray State. Yeah. Um, so I was listening to somebody today. I wish I could credit them. I don't remember who it was, but they were talking about how this line opened up and it's going to be really close to a pick them. And there's going to be some books that are going to have Murray state favored by one or two, but four goes off because of the publicity that just scares me because you and I know gambling trends. Yeah. You and I know how some of this stuff works when everybody's going one way. I kind of want to go the other. But I'm not. I'm going Murray State. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing. Murray State for me. Uh, All that to say, same thing. Florida State, Vermont. I love Florida State. I, I think I, Vermont they got could so many damn athletes. Yes, I think Vermont could keep this thing close because they can, like, they can score. They can score so much. Um, but in the end, uh, Florida State just overwhelming. They're, overwhelming. They're one of the most athletic teams, if not the most, from top to bottom in the tournament. I agree. I mean, they play with you. like 11, 12 dudes. Yeah. And they're all freak athletes. Um, so from there, Buffalo and either Arizona State or St. John's. I got Arizona State uh, beating St. John's. Okay, I got Arizona State beating St. John's. I got Buffalo beating Arizona State. I got the same thing. And here's what's kind of cool about this. Bobby Hurley. Yeah. He's going to get to coach against all those kids that he recruited at Buffalo. Well, he didn't recruit these kids. Well, okay, he didn't recruit any of he's freshmen. Been, he's been gone for four years. Oh, he hadn't been gone that long. Yeah, yeah. Well, he got the Arizona State job like a year, two years ago. This is his fourth season. This is his fourth year. Yeah, he. so he didn't make the tournament his first two years. He has now made it that. to the play-in game two straight years. How did I miss that? I, you, time, I thought it happened like last year. Time, I, I thought time this was going to be the second year, and I knew, well, you know, Buffalo, time does, flies. Buffalo doesn't have a bunch of – one and done. So. No, these, these guys that were brought in were brought in by Nate Oates. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then he's not going to get to coach. It's, it's still team. cool that that Hurley and Nate Oates, who Oates was his head assistant at right. Buffalo, like that's – and Oates is the name right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, all around. Now, now St. John's could just monkey this whole thing up. And they could. They, they're going to beat him, and then we lose our storyline. Yep. You got that. Texas well, Tech and Northern Kentucky. Okay. We both have Buffalo winning no matter who they played. Yeah. Or did you have Arizona State? No, no, no I got Buffalo. All right. Texas Tech, Buffalo. Northern Kentucky. Texas Tech, Northern Kentucky. I got Texas Tech. Texas Tech. No, Northern Kentucky has been a lot of fun to bet on this year. But cover a lot of lines? Yeah, they, they did cover a lot of lines. They might cover this line. John this, Brandon. This going to be a decent number. John Brandon is their head coach. He is, even if they were to keep this game relatively close, I know that he would find a way to screw it up at the end. He was Anthony Grant's head assistant at Alabama. Got and then he got the Northern Kentucky job. He's been there for four years now. It's second NCAA tournament. He hadn't won a game in the tournament yet. This is a really good Northern Kentucky team. They can keep the game close because Texas Tech, with their defense, and they like to slow it down sometimes, uh, That it could be close. There is no chance of an upset here. Okay. All Zero right. chance. Texas I, Tech I got there. Texas Tech, but I don't have that kind of confidence. So. Nevada, Florida. All right. I, I'm going to guess you've been telling me all year when we're talking about gambling through text messages and stuff, that you really like Nevada. I don't care. I'm sticking with the SEC. As much as I hate Florida, I'm riding with Florida because they played really good teams all year. And I'm going to bet fine. Nevada didn't. Uh, no, 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 Nevada didn't. But Nevada's still a really good basketball team. They, they this probably is a, are. It, with metrics and their tournament experience, I mean, remember this team made it to the Elite Eight last Texas year. Texas lost like, what, 13 games, 15 games this year? Like they've got, I mean, not Texas, uh, uh, Florida, Florida. They lost they, fifteen games. Yeah, fifteen. They got, they got crap load of losses. Yeah. I know that. A lot of losses, and lost. they and they lost to some bad teams they lost too. Some bad te- they lost some good teams. I just feel like the SEC was really good this year compared to what 
we normally are yeah. in basketball. I'm giving the nod to a strong conference. Okay, that they makes sense. Be ready. I'll take I'll take Nevada in this one. I think they are battle tested as far well, as the I tournament goes. Very far, so it doesn't change my mind. Exactly. And next up, Michigan and Montana. Uh, this line, by the way, opened up at Michigan minus twenty two. Monster number. Do you know what it dropped to? No. This morning it was at fifteen. Oh, whoa, 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 15. whoa! Fifteen. Whoa. whoa, too much market correction there. Yeah. I like to bet dogs week one. I'm glad you knew that information. I just oh, stepped yeah. on that trap. Yeah, that was. Uh, Whew. I don't like that. No, 15, see what it looks like 22 to 15. I mean, that, it's a whole touchdown. <laughs> Just in a, yeah. uh, ridiculous. In basketball. Uh, so we're both taking Michigan? Oh, yeah. Okay, now let's uh, let's move up from the bottom up. Uh, Michigan against either Florida or Nevada. We both got Michigan. I've got Michigan. You've got Michigan. I got so Michigan. It doesn't matter who, who we had the first one. Uh, this one, I'm going to guess, might be different. Buffalo and Texas Tech. I have Buffalo. I've got Texas Tech in this one. Okay. I, I like this Buffalo team. I, I've... I've literally I watched zero of their games. I watched a lot of highlights and talking heads tell me what to think, and people do love Buffalo. I, I like, will that's tell a good you team. this: this is coming off of I've also seen Texas Tech play very up and then very down. Makes sense. And, and so I'm just it's a back to back. They're gonna play the next day, and if they let down that next day, they lose. They go home. That makes well, sense. Well, they get every, they get two days. Yeah, they did say the the day after. <laughs> but that's right. But uh, but yeah no I, I've got, got Texas Buffalo. Tech here Texas Tech number one defensive uh, defensive efficiency in the country like they are Even, yeah do you think that's a that has more to do with who they play in their conference like is their defense better than Virginia's but Virginia just has to play North Carolina Va Tech you know Duke Syracuse and these other teams No I don't think so because it, it's it it's adjusted efficiency I know I know so, it's supposed to be adjusted but. I don't know that you can adjust for that kind of athleticism difference because I mean, the you, Big Twelve. Come on now, let's talk about the. the well, I mean, don't don't forget, like Texas year. Tech made it to the Elite Eight last year. I know, no, like, I know they, this did. is a good no, basketball team. I know they did. I know they did, and they were really fun last last year. They seemed way more athletic though. This year they're very defensive minded. Last year they just looked they like are. they they, they kind of look like the Florida State team this year, but they just out athlete everybody. They got better shooters. I'll, I'll say that. Okay, they might. They might. I haven't watched enough so, to, to, they, be, to be intelligent. They got much better shooters this I'm year. I'm rolling with the dog. I'm rolling with, with one of them. Uh, right. They decent hires. And so. I got I got Texas Tech here. Uh, Murray State, Florida State. Florida State, man. I All think right, they got, got so them. many damn athletes, dude. I, I agree with you. It's the same way that they made it to the Elite Eight last year. Yeah. Right? Same I mean, that's – Which, by the way, this year, uh, in this regional, you got four teams that made it to the Elite Eight last year. Oh, crap. Between Nevada, Michigan, Nevada, uh, or may, no, was Nevada? I don't know where Nevada was. Nevada Michigan, was Sweet Sixteen last year, Michigan, not Elite Eight. Florida State and uh, uh, Gonzaga. Yeah, I mean it's a, well in Texas Tech Elite Eight. Oh yeah, that's it. Oh, and yeah. Florida State made it. Gonzaga did not make it to the Elite Eight last year. Oh, that's right, they got bounced be, because they got bounced in the second, second round, round by Florida State. That's, that's, so this will be a rematch here. Uh, so uh, you've got Florida State beating. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Uh, Gonzaga and Syracuse. We're up to this now. I have Syracuse winning. I have, I have Gonzaga going out in the second round again. Huh. I'm telling you, dude, this – I mean, I could, I can see it. Syracuse is just that thorn in people's side, and they, they get beat in these tournaments by teams that are far more athletic than them. Yeah. I don't think Gonzaga is that much elite-level athletic than them. That makes sense. Okay, okay. That's I'm, just my – look, I've been – No, no, look, no, I'm, I'm not you. good at any of these things. That's, I came in DFL against me, you, and our wives last year. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, you did. I, I'm not good at this, so – It's all the good. The fact that we disagree probably you, isn't a bad thing. You know how high I've been on Gonzaga all year. I know. You've been I, crazy high on him. I got and Gonzaga I just, going through this. I, I And you obviously see how I make picks. Yeah. Untested teams I don't like in these tournaments. Now, it every year, no one's going to say – Lola Chicago last year was super tested. They have that was one out of the eight teams yeah. that was super to everybody else was really tested. Yeah. Okay. There's going to be one maybe untested team to sneak through, but they're not going to be a bunch of them. No, I okay? agree. Gonzaga, I just they don't play anybody. I know it's a broken record, and everybody hears that and sees that and prove it. I'm with you because right now they haven't. If they were playing anybody other than a team that just plays a different style of defense, I would I would give them a nod to go through the next round. 
Okay. The, the problem is they're not. They're they're playing a team that is going to throw something at them that they've never seen before. Makes sense. And they're going to have one day to prepare for it. Makes sense. Let's uh, all right. So who do you have in the elite eight? Elite eight. Uh, little law. Uh, elite eight. I've got Michigan and Florida State. I've got Gonzaga and Texas Tech. Okay, you got Michigan going out. I got Michigan going out. I got Texas Tech We're beating. Totally different here. Yeah, and I've got Michigan going to the Final Four. All right, and I've got Gonzaga in the Final Four. Okay. So I got a, a Duke Gonzaga rematch. That's uh, I I want to see it. Okay, and we'll see. Is this uh, Gonzaga's first Final Four if they make it? No. In how long? Two years. They were in the Final Four three years ago. Two years. Ago? They played North Carolina in the national championship game two years ago. Oh, they did. I remember, yeah, I remember that now. So I apologize. Let's move on to the South Regional. Virginia Gardner Webb. Any chance of a repeat from last year? Oh no. I think no. there is zero chance no. of a repeat. Uh Virginia goes through right there. Ole Miss, Oklahoma. I got Ole Miss. I'm going with the SEC boys. That makes sense. There's a lot of people that that like uh Kermit Davis. I love Kermit Davis. And and I'm all in on it. I'm with you there. But uh You think he has any chance to get national coach of the year? Yeah. He I mean, he he had the biggest turnaround in he a should. power conference he of, of any team. He was dead last in the in what was supposed to be a bad SEC, and he made the tournament. Well, it was supposed to be a good SEC this year. Like Auburn, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama made the tournament last year. Nobody saw LSU being good. I thought no. Alabama was going to take a massive step back. Well, LSU lost. had like a big recruiting class, yeah, so they thought they'd be all right. We've but, had, we've had good recruiting we, before. We put Ben Simmons in the NBA, but he wasn't. We were yeah, terrible. but that was only one guy. You had like a whole bunch I, of guys. I, I get in. it, but, but so, anyway. Um, I just I didn't think the SEC was going to be great, and they were picked to be dead last. They were super competitive. Yeah, and and he's he's done an amazing. Job. He's he's pretty for older. him. I I want them to win this game. That makes sense. He uh, he just got a new contract extension. Well, he should. He absolutely so, should after one year. Got his uh, got him a brand new added four years on or whatever it is. So pay that man his money. Um, and it's Mississippi, so obviously it can only be a five year contract. Right. Anyway, yeah, you, yeah, you just re up him as it goes. Uh, I've got, I've actually got Oklahoma there. Lon yeah. Kruger more tested in the tournament, you know. And I, I think Oklahoma's got better players. Wisconsin and Oregon. I got Oregon. I wonder, did you fall into the trap of everybody talking about how hot Oregon is and da 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 da? Well, it's not that they're hot. It's, um, oh god, Dan Alvin. Yeah. I was gonna say, who's the who's the NBA kid? Um, oh, uh, well, the NBA kid is injured. No, I thought he was back. Hang on. You talking about Bowl Bowl? Yeah. No, I think he's out. I'm I'm fairly certain he's out. I'm not worried about. It. We're not worried about. It. I, so I went back and I actually looked at like recruiting classes for these teams on stuff. Oregon was supposed to be really good this year. Yeah. This was the year they were supposed to be like, you know, Final Four ready. Final Four ready. Yeah, like gonna win the the Pac-12. And, and be nationally ranked all year and all this other stuff. And and they got hurt, and they just weren't. Yeah. If they're at all healthy, I think they get past the first round in a, in a 5-12 matchup. I don't think they're a legit 12 team based on the ranking of the recruits. The athletes that are there, I think, are better. Now, you know how much I love Wisconsin yeah. and all things, and so I really wanted to pick Wisconsin. But I just kind of thought – Man, I, I think I think Oregon they're going to have a five twelve upset. I'm going to pick it here. Okay, I mean that makes sense. I've got Wisconsin. Okay, I think Oregon is is vulnerable inside. Wisconsin with Ethan Happ probably going to eat them alive. Now, what I get worried about is like the hack a Hap thing because Ethan Happ cannot shoot free throws to save his life. But I think it'll be a close game. I, I like Wisconsin here. I think. I think they're just a better overall team. I'm not buying into the Oregon hype just yet. Okay. Now, I did, as far as against the spread for the entire Pac-12 tournament, because I, I felt really good about that uh, and made a lot of money off of that. Okay. But but here, um, you know, it just seems like it sets up way too easy. Like, the game's in San Jose, Oregon the hot team. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. Nobody's counting on Wisconsin. But like this is this is a good basketball team, and I, I'm going to take Wisconsin on this one. Kansas State, UC Irvine. I got UC Irvine. Ding, same here. I just don't believe in the Big Twelve this year. They well, Kansas State, like Dean Wade is is probably out. He was wearing a, a damn boot on the selection show, and they they weren't Pac-12 bad, but the Big Twelve was pretty damn disappointing this year. It was, yeah, it was pretty. Uh, 
I didn't think Kansas State should have been a four seed. But this is well, they, that, they, I'm they the should've... guy that watches one month of basketball and then thinks I know more than the people that watch it all year. Yeah, they, like, they deserved that. a four I seed who I am. based on who they had between like November and February. And then in February, like they still looked good in spots, but there were other spots where it's like, eh, okay. Without Dean Wade, I mean, he is their best rebounder. He, he shoots the best three-point percentage. He's the best free-throw shooter. If you don't have that guy, like UC Irvine on a 16-game winning streak, yep. uh, they've got the number one uh, a two-point defense yep. in the country. Like, they, they got a hell of a coach. This is a team that is rolling right now. I like UC Irvine. I'm taking them. Me too. I'll, uh, I'm going to tell you, I've got them in the Sweet 16. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Okay. So, Villanova and St. Mary's. I'm going with Nova. Going with Nova. I really wanted to put St. Mary's in, and then I realized this team has played in the national championship game two out of the last three years. Yeah. I know they've lost a lot, but they they know how to be here. They know how to play this tournament. St. Mary's is top ten in the country defending the three. Villanova? You can see the line drawn. If they don't shoot well, they lose. They lose. But that's I mean, that's been their forte uh, for a while. For, but for, they for in years. the past they had like really good leadership at point guard and everything else. And and I don't think they have that this year. Well, no, they lost those guys to the NBA. Yeah, that and happens. I mean, there's a reason that Villanova got a six seed. That's you know? right. No, no, um, I obviously know they're not the team of old, but yeah, I thought they're favored. They're the they're still the big boy six versus eleven. They should win this game. They know how to win this game. I'm taking St. Mary's. Okay. I got St. Mary's pulling the upset. All right. Uh, Purdue, Old Dominion. I got Purdue. I got Purdue, too. These dudes shoot the lights out. Yeah, they really do. They uh, Carson Edwards, like, it, it comes down to Carson Edwards. Like, if he can shoot, then, like, if he, if he does well, yep. they're going to win the game. And I expect him to do well against Old Dominion. ODU, uh, Cincinnati and Iowa. Like the game's in Columbus, Ohio. It's a de facto Cincinnati home game. I'm going Cincy on this one. I don't know that that's my reason, though, man. I'm going Cincinnati, but today's good. They were just here in Memphis, our hometown, and they just rolled through the American yeah, tournament. They they rolled they Houston. They beat the hell out of Houston. Yeah. Houston's a good team. And that's, I mean, that was a week after Houston rolled them at Cincy. So, no, this is, this is a team, they're well coached. They always play hard on this tournament. They all I always have them going a couple of rounds, and they always seem to go a couple of rounds. Yeah. I, I'm I'm riding Cincinnati. Uh Cincy, again, great defensive team. Yeah. Like top eight in the country defense. Yes, sir. Uh Iowa, the only thing they got going for them is a good offense. But obviously good defense can Just be good that. offense. Yep. That's the way it goes. Iowa's defense is non existent. Tennessee and Colgate. Tennessee. Tennessee. At Colgate, however, this could end up being a really high-scoring game. Tennessee is the number two adjusted offensive uh, efficiency team in the country. Colgate, top ten in tempo. They okay. score they and fast. score and score. The the uh, over-under on this game, I think, is like 160. Woo. Yeah, for a tournament game, that is absurd. That's but insane. I could absolutely see Colgate ain't worried about defense. No. They're, they're like Penny Hardaway in them, where it's just rolling up and down, up and down the floor. Oh. And so that should be a lot of fun. All right, let's uh, move on. Second round, Virginia, Oklahoma, or Virginia, Ole Miss? I think Virginia is going to beat Ole Miss. All right, Virginia there. All right, uh, and I've got that. So you have got Oregon and UC sure. Irvine. I do. I've got Wisconsin, UC Irvine. I've got UC Irvine in the Sweet 16. I've got Oregon in the Sweet 16. Okay. Now that makes sense. All right, so we got Virginia against Oregon or Virginia against UC if Irvine. If Oregon's right, you're, you're betting that they're not going to be right. I'm betting yeah. that they are. If they're right – they should be a Sweet 16 team. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, St. Mary's and Purdue? Well, Villanova, well, I Purdue. Nova, you have St. Mary's. I have Purdue. We both got Purdue. I, I, I really like this Purdue team. I watched a lot of Big Ten basketball, and, and the, they, they shoot the lights out. Cincy and Tennessee. This is was an absolute no, screw it's job it's by the NCAA oh my God. of you know, putting, come on, putting Travis. Tennessee in the – I'm telling you, it's not Clay Travis. Gary, that is Gary. There have been multiple screw jobs in here. Uh, Kansas State having to go on play this one like more than anything else. Like you can say it a number we, two we seed. Ad- we address it. It's fine. But if Cincinnati gets beat 
by Iowa, then, we're, then it we're doesn't penciling, matter. Then it doesn't matter. I mean, so even you're still, just working under an assumption that this thing might happen. Even still, Iowa in Columbus against Tennessee is still kind of ridiculous, no, right? No, it's not. No, it's not. Where were you going to put Tennessee? Uh, good question. I mean, that's probably the best place to put them. I mean, no, I'd probably put Tennessee in Columbia, South Carolina. What bracket would that be in? I don't know where these places are. Well, it's just uh, so Columbia. Like, the first round Mine is just whatever. That, Gary. And so Columbia, So you would have them San in the East Jose, bracket. Or have them in Jacksonville. No, because the, the first well, round locations... What? The first round locations don't matter. Like that's that that doesn't tie to a region because you've got uh, so over here you got Wisconsin, Oregon, and Kansas State, UC Irvine, and San Jose, and then over here you got Liberty and Mississippi State and Virginia Tech, St. Louis, and San Jose. It's it's fine. It's fine. I, I look. I've been the Tennessee apologist on this show more than anybody else. Okay, it's fine. Either way, we both it's got fine. Tennessee winning. I've got Tennessee winning. I will tell you. If if Cincinnati wins it, it won't it won't surprise me. No, no, that won't surprise me. I think me either. this is one of my favorite games in this bracket. If we get this matchup, I think it's going to be an incredible game. And I think people are going to bitch about the location, and I think that's going to have nothing to do with and it. And it may end up being a non-story. That's right. Virginia against either UC Irvine or Oregon. I got Virginia winning. I got Virginia going to the Elite Eight. I've got the same thing. And Purdue Tennessee. We both got Tennessee. I got Tennessee. All right, I've Even got Tennessee Purdue. in that as well. Uh. Virginia over Tennessee, or I have Tennessee going to the to the final four. I like Tony Bennett as a coach better than I do Rick, Rick uh, Barnes. Yeah, Woo. I like Rick Barnes. I we'll like see. Uh, this this will be Tony Bennett's first final four if he gets there. If he gets there. We'll see. I think that this is the revenge tour for Tony oh, it Bennett. Abs- it absolutely could be. It absolutely could be. All right. So now the final region. We have spent so long on this. Uh, North Carolina, Iona, no chance here. North Carolina. Utah State, Washington? I have Washington, but I, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know anything about either one of these teams. Washington, 1-7 against NCAA tournament teams this year. Okay. The one win was over Oregon, who had to win the, yeah, the conference tournament. To so, go, to get there. Um, I'm going to go Utah State on that one. Like I said, Auburn, it, they're getting beat by North Carolina in the next round. It does not matter. Yeah, yeah it's, I've got the same thing. North Carolina next round doesn't matter. Yeah. Got, Auburn and New Mexico State. I got Auburn. I got those, Auburn as well. Those guys get hot. There's nobody beating them. I mean, when I say that, I mean nobody in the country. If they shoot the way they shot through the SEC tournament, yeah. nobody's beating them. Now you're. I think you're probably right. And and we'll see if that hot streak continues oh, on here. It loses, which is why those teams kind of don't win championships, but they make a lot of noise. The the thing that might be a little weird about it is the game is in Salt Lake City. Auburn's playing against New Mexico State. I don't care about That's that. still like. You know, a twelve-hour thing, so it's not like location or whatever. But either way, uh, Kansas Northeastern four versus thirteen. I got Kansas winning. I, I know everybody's picking the Northeastern upset. I really want it to. I got the Northeastern upset, and and I thought Bill Self has just been here too long. I don't know anything about Northeastern. I'm not going to get cute. I'm just going to just going to pencil Kansas in and go. This is mainly Northeastern can shoot the running lights out of the ball. Okay. They they hit 40% from three. 47% of their shots that they take are from three. If they get hot. If they do that, they'll win the game. They'll win the game. Yeah. And and how much fun would that be to see against Auburn? Oh, yeah. I mean, you just got kids chucking oh, it up be, from everywhere. No, that'd be crazy. And then getting watching Kansas lose on a national scale in the first round. Yeah. It is a bad Kansas team. It's still fun. It's still fun. It's still fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm in with it. Uh, d- 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 uh, let's Iowa move down. State. Iowa State, Ohio State. I think Ohio uh, Iowa State's a really good basketball team. They are so ridiculously, infuriatingly, just not uh, steady, not consistent at all. They are so inconsistent; it drives me insane. I've still got them winning the game. They, they won. They won four games in the in the Big Twelve. Yeah, yeah. So. But Steve Prom, like he's won three Big Twelve championships, yeah. like tournament championships. Like he knows how to coach in the tournament. That's what, that's, so that's I'll it. I'll go with that. Uh, I'll I go with I Iowa State. What they look like regular season. I know this. When it comes to win or go home, they send people home more than they go home. Yeah, they do. Uh, Steve Prom, by the way, uh, former Murray State head coach. 
Houston, Georgia State. Got Houston. Let's hope old Ron don't jump on a scooter after this one, right? Like you remember that? that like when uh, uh, Ron Hunter, the head coach of Georgia State, like he was bouncing around after they upset, I think Baylor. Uh, a couple of years ago, three years ago, whatever, and like broke his ankle. So in the second round game, he had to like drive around on that little scooter. Uh, it, I don't think it matters. Houston is is winning this one. Houston is unreal. So when they were in Memphis playing the ACC, the, or the, the American, sorry, the AAC, I uh, I was listening to a lot more Houston stuff because I didn't watch a lot of Houston once I started watching basketball. And the types of like drills that they go through and how hard they compete in practice. It's it, pretty nuts. It kind of made me want to, I rooted for Cincinnati. I'm, I've got friends that go to university of Cincinnati. I like that school. Um, it it kind of really made me want Houston to win it. And then when making my bracket, I wanted to take them farther than I have them because I, I just really like the way they work and compete in practice. Have you got him winning this game? I've got him winning this game. Okay. I think that's a teaser. <laughs> Wofford and Seton Hall. I got Wofford winning that. I got Seton Hall, but I don't know anything about either of these teams, and I'm, I'm picking an upset. Makes sense. That's Makes my sense. logic. Kentucky, Abilene yeah, Christian. watches these teams. I, yeah, I've, Kentucky. I uh, that makes it. I've got the same thing. Uh, Kentucky, Wofford. I got Kentucky. I got one. Kentucky. Um, Houston, Iowa State. I've got Houston. I've got Iowa State, and I really didn't like it. I really I mean, didn't like it at all. It's in Tulsa. It's, you know, not too terribly far from either one of these places. Houston has played in the arena before. I think Houston is a really good team. I think they could actually beat Kentucky. I don't believe in, like, changing my mind and writing stuff out. I know I wouldn't scratch out. That was just That's, I did the same thing. But there. but I, I'm, I'm very – I'm sticking with it, but I'll, be, I'll probably be betting Houston. That makes sense. I don't need to see the number. North Carolina and Auburn. Oh, I got Auburn. Well, hang on. Oh, did North we even Carolina? go through? Uh, no. Auburn and Northeastern, we're, well, we're taking Auburn. I got Auburn and Kansas, and I got yeah, Auburn. Yeah, Auburn. And That's then the UNC, Utah State, or UNC, Washington. Either way, UNC. we got North Carolina. So, North Carolina and Auburn. I got North Carolina. I got the same thing. Because, as you said before, Roy I find, Williams. I you find just Roy Williams, and I find the Final Four. Draw the line. figure the rest out. Uh, North Carolina, Kentucky. I got Kentucky. No, you oh, don't. hang on. Are oh, you talking about Iowa State or Houston and Kentucky? Oh, I, 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 I looked down. I saw UK. I'm sorry. You miss, it's, uh, so, stuff. Kentucky, Houston. I've got Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. And I've got Kentucky against Iowa State. I will tell you this. If Houston is in this game and they beat Iowa State, I'm going to be rooting for Houston again. Oh, yeah. I could believe that. I'm the one guy around Memphis that still roots for Cal Perry. Yeah. I like him. Yeah, I, like I, could, him I could see that. I got North Carolina. In Kentucky in my lead eight. I've got the same thing. I've got Kentucky going to the Final Four. No, sir. No, sir. This North Carolina team is really good. I mean, they're really, really good. They were a Zion Williams being an absolute monster to beat them by one point to cost Away them from, a chance to play, to play for a championship. State, for a championship in the, in, the, in the... I do think that North Carolina is a really good basketball team. I think they're just... So we have a Final Four. Let me ask you this. How many teams in this thing do you actually think can win it all? Not just your final four and what you've picked. So I've got Michigan State, Michigan, UT, North Carolina. But I know Duke could obviously win it all. There's nobody else in the East bracket that I actually think has a chance to win it all no matter what. I think I Virginia think, Tech could win it all. See, I don't. Um, especially with Justin Robinson back, I think they could absolutely do it. Uh, so Virginia Tech, Duke, Michigan State, uh, Gonzaga. So in this, in the bottom tier bracket, I think Michigan and Florida State are the only two that I think could win it all, win the championship. I don't think Florida State could win it because I, while they do have great athletes, I think it takes more than that to win a championship. I'm with you. Like I could see Florida State beating Gonzaga. Out. Yeah. But but I I'm just saying I there aren't a lot of teams that I actually think can win it all in Virginia's bracket. I think Virginia and Tennessee, as much as I like Purdue and I like Cincinnati, I don't think they have a snowball's chance in hell of winning the national championship. I mean, depending on matchups, I guess they could come I out of that could. bracket. 
But but even then, then they got to play another big game, then they got to play a championship game. I just at some and we point don't see time, Purdue I see one that. of those teams falling. And then in the North Carolina's bracket, the only team outside of – this is the bracket where I think more teams can win it. I think Houston's got the dudes to win it and the way they play. Yeah. And if Auburn – shoot, if they can shoot five games, six, whatever, how many games they got to play? Six games. To, like they did in the SEC tournament, then there's nobody beating them. There's no, because when a team shoots that many threes and makes them, yeah, there's, nothing there's you no can defense do. for that. There's nothing you can do to stop it, and there's no other team in there – now that you're has that many shooters. You're a hundred percent right, them. but I mean the list is real small of who can actually win the tournament. Yeah, no, you're you're right about that. I don't see a Cinderella walking away with it this year. They might make it to an Elite Eight, and we don't have them on here. They might make it to a Final Four even, but to win the championship, this is this is just I don't think it's really it's possible. I think there's there's about eight teams this year. I Maybe really nine. think this is one of the hardest tournaments in all the sports. Yeah, I agree with that. To actually win and to walk away with a championship. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, I've got Virginia, Kentucky in the Final Four. I got Virginia winning that game. I got Duke, Gonzaga in the other side. I've got uh, Gonzaga winning that one. I got Gonzaga and Virginia and Virginia winning the national championship. I've got Michigan State, Michigan rematch. I think Michigan State goes. 4-0 against their biggest rival. Whew. Very excited about that possibility. And then I've got Tennessee and North Carolina. I have North Carolina winning this one. I'm going to tell you, I have filled out six or seven brackets. They all pretty much look the exact same. There's a few differences. And almost all of them either have North Carolina or Michigan State on this one. I wrote North Carolina only because a month ago we did a podcast, and, I, and you asked, who do we think can win it right now? And I said North Carolina. And I put money on North Carolina at plus 830. Plus 830? That was a month ago. That is impressive. So That's that's some real deal stuff is what that is. So I, I'm riding with it here. If Izzo wins, it would make me the happiest person alive. Yeah, it's been a long time since he, uh, it's since been he a cut while. some nets. Roy's got him a couple. Since then. Tom yeah. Madden. Nope, nope, not at all. All right, let's jump into uh, Mike Trout. Mike Trout, new contract with the Angels. You just see these numbers? 12 years, 430? 430 Ooh, million. Good Lord, that's a lot of money. Hang on. $35.8 million Pull up the other per year. Uh, I've got two of them written down. I got Bryce Harper, 13 years, there's 330 only, million. Yeah, there's only two others. And, uh, and that was 25.4 million a year. Manny Machado with the uh, Padres, yep. 10, years, 10 years, 300 million. That's three or 30, 30 million a year. Uh, is this it, so? You and I have talked about this off of the air. Is this a smart thing to do? The only one here that I would think would be worth the money is Trout. I, I think I agree with you. I don't know that because we've never. I will tell you this: so far, there has never been a ten-year deal that was worth it, and now we have a twelve and a thirteen-year deal. Um. The only way Harper's deal is worth it is strictly because average per year. Average is, per year, what he's making, there's going to be 30 to 40 players that are going to make more money than him in two years per year. Yeah. And he's well worth that. It's strange to me that Harper turned down $45 million a year for five years from the Dodgers. If you don't think you can get 25 a year on the back half of your your five-year deal, that's way more money yeah. than taking 25 a year for, for 12 years. It's just like, are you not good at math? Or was the ego so much that you had to have the biggest contract ever signed by anybody? And you only had it for three weeks? No, no, was it even that? I don't know how long ago it was compared to today. I don't know that it was an ego thing. Like oh, it's he, 100%. He wanted, he, wanted the number, he wanted the most amount of money anybody's ever signed for he didn't care about he didn't care at all about how much per year which is crazy that's that's insane that is insane i had heard some different things about this like harper wanted some place that was going to stick with him like he's got a no trade clause yeah but, uh, but all but this all, different stuff yeah, like and there's no I mean, there's no opt out 
Like Harper doesn't have an opt out, and the team doesn't have an opt out. This thing is married for twelve years. But thirteen years. For thirteen. No, that was twelve. Harper's twelve. No, his Harper's thirteen, and Trout was twelve. Oh, okay, I keep. I'm gonna. And Machado going. was ten. Yeah, I knew Machado's because his is easy. It's yep. thirty for ten. That, that's yep. three hundred thousand, three hundred million, and easy I enough. Can, I can do that math. Yeah. The other two mess me up. Other two, not so much. Um, I kind of, I don't know if this is legal in baseball, but if you're getting to a point where you're going to offer the contract that they just offered to Trout, which is basically is half it, a billion dollars, is it? Like, is there a way in language you could just give him percentage of ownership? In that way, if the team makes money, then he makes a lot. And if they don't, then he makes something. But he's got that in perpetuity. So, like, it's not a 12-year deal. It's, you know, I don't know, 3% of a major league team. and For forever. That might be, you know, $22 million a year, but it's, you know, $22 million a year forever. And you're just always going to work with and in the organization forever. I don't know if that's something they – like, I wonder I if, if it would be a, I wonder if it would be like a conflict of interest, too. Well, I don't know. It wouldn't be a conflict of interest. You've had co- player owner, uh, player managers in the past, stuff like that. Yeah, um, but those it, are managers. It, just, like, it, it would either be in the bylaws and it's just not allowed, but since it's not a salary cap, like, the Titans tried to do that with Peyton Manning to get him when he went on his free agency spiel. Uh, okay. And because it's a hard salary cap, you can't do that because – we don't know how much his salary is actually going to be based on how much money the Titans make. And, and that makes so sense. because the NFL has hard salary caps, you can't do it. Baseball doesn't, and so I don't know why you wouldn't be able to do it. Um, I mean, you got a, you got a valid point there. I, I would almost rather, all, if I was an owner, now maybe I guess the owner, I'd rather pay you half a billion dollars for, you know, 15 years or 12 years or whatever it ends up being, and then when we're done, we're just done. If you don't have anything else to offer, then I can be – we can depart this relationship. Yeah. If I've handed you ownership, then we never depart this relationship. But, um, you know, I don't know. I just feel like baseball guys are always going to be baseball guys. If you give him parts of the ownership, he's never going to go be a hitting coach somewhere else. He's always going to be a hitting coach for you. He's okay. never going to help you scout somewhere else. He's always going to be helping scout for you. For you. For He's that invested day. in that area, that city, and he goes nowhere. And it's not, Green Bay it's not all about situation. money. It's all about well, it's team about, and It's stability. about money the rest of your life, not big contract today. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, I, it, it might not be allowed, whatever, um, but but – I would. I'm always interested in creative accounting for some of these big, just crazy mega deals. But so far, none of these ten year deals have worked out for anybody. I mean, nobody. The Rangers said two years after they signed, two years after they signed Alex Rodriguez, Alex Rodriguez was still an MVP player at that point in time. wasn't worth it. Could not wait to move him. Yeah, I mean that. You're right. And he and he st- he he led the Yankees to several World Series. Won a World Series. Won an MVP after that. Like, he was still a great player. Still the best player in baseball. But wasn't worth the amount of money because you couldn't build around him. While yeah. you don't have a salary cap, all these guys got deep pockets. But at some point in time, the pockets run dry. Yeah. Now, you're you're right. And it's just not how you win in baseball anymore. Young teams do it through the draft. And, 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 and they just, find ways to win. That's right. They get a couple of big free agents. Let's uh let's move into college football talk. Teams projected to be favored in every game in the regular season in 2019. Are you ready? Okay. I'm Alabama. Go about this. Okay. Are right, they projected to, to be what to be favored in right. in every game? All right, that doesn't surprise me. Clemson doesn't surprise me. Georgia. Okay, that doesn't surprise me, but I'm assuming they don't. Play Alabama or LSU? Do they play LSU again? No, they play okay. Texas A and M, and they get them at home. They get them at home. Even if they played LSU, they'd probably get them at home. And probably be favored. Yeah. Uh, Michigan. That surprises me. Well, Ohio State coming into Ann Arbor with a new head coach, okay, new quarterback. But just the fact that. of the Big Ten is this is projected to be favored. Okay. In every game, Oklahoma. That doesn't surprise me. Nope. Same here, and Washington. Uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. Pac-12 is just bad. I got one more for you. Okay. Memphis. Boom, baby. <laughs> I picked them to be undefeated last year. Memphis. I was, I was just a shade off on that. Memphis 
is and and let's okay. So bet online. Come on with it. Bet online opened uh, their college football lines. What are their over are, under for season totals? I want that number. They don't have that out yet. God bullshit. These are these are just the it, now. Whenever it happens, obviously we will be having a, a show about this. I'm gonna need that number. But here are the college football opening point spreads for like week one or like this big is like games this is or? week three. It's it's uh, it's for big games throughout the season. Okay. Week zero, they got Florida minus eight and a half against Miami. That was approved, by the way, and so that'll be on August twenty fourth. Uh, Florida minus eight and a half. That makes sense for uh, for a new coach going up against Dan Mullen and that bunch. Florida State minus four and a half against Boise State. That's in Jacksonville. Okay. Auburn minus three against Oregon. Uh, that sounds about right. All right. South Carolina oh, minus good. seven against North Carolina. I have no idea. Oh no. Yep. With well, Mac Brown and that's that whole fine. bunch. Yeah. You're right. I'm good. I'm that good. that game's in Charlotte, by that's the way. Fine. Doesn't matter where it is. LSU minus six against Texas in week two. Woo, we're at Texas. Yeah. And we're catch, we're minus six? Yep. I was hoping we'd be close to a pick em. It will be come game time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're we're probably Texas right. Texas people get some money out there. Texas A&M plus 21 at Clemson. That doesn't shock me at all. I would take all 21 of those points. I agree with you. And I would take A&M on a big-ass money line. But Clemson's going to be tough. Yeah. It's just going to be tough. I really, I'm really excited about this A&M team. Their schedule is this, this one, me, This one ought to surprise you. Stanford plus four at USC. Yeah. Yeah, that surprises me all right. I, I thought it might. I thought it might. Uh, week three, Oklahoma minus 11 at UCLA. I think Oklahoma will run them. Yeah, we have, absolutely I mean, I, run them. I could not tell you anything about UCLA. I don't know what Chip Kelly's doing. I mean, they they looked what, what, okay see, towards the end of last season. This team will look completely different than last year's team, but we don't know anything about what they're going to look like until about week three or four. Arizona State plus four and a half at Michigan State. Oh, I think that that'll be another fun one between uh, you want, uh, Herm and uh, D'Antoni. Yeah, is going D'Antonio is going to have some uh, revenge in that one. Get some stank off that. So Michigan State minus four and a half though. Michigan State. Yeah, I figured it'd be a lot, I figured no. it'd be at least a field goal. No, the fact that the fact that Michigan State went down there last year with chances of thinking they could win the Big Ten and lost. Yeah, I, I think I think they're gonna get the get a little stank off that. So check this out. Week two, Stanford has to go to USC. Week three, Stanford minus two and a half at UCF. And they Stanford starting the season off stout. Yeah, I don't know what UCF's gonna look like. I just the quarterback. We'll see if Brandon so Wimbush is uh, is the starter or not. The, the, the quarterback situation is just so different. That you know, uh, what's his? Who's the guy that broke his leg? Uh, Mackenzie Milton. Mackenzie Milton. Um, Mac played pretty well towards was, the end of the year, but he was so he, he super inexperienced. I, we talked about this last year when he got hurt. Shame on all of college football and all of college football media people that cover this stuff for a living for not building Milton up more throughout the, what he did when over a when team. he was healthy. Over a two-year span, what he did, very few college players do it because most of them do that their junior year and never come back. Yeah. Um, week four, Tennessee plus four and a half at Florida. That sounds about right. That's I figured that's, that's a rivalry I, game. I, I yeah, thought I that might be. Touchdown. Well, I thought it might be closer to a touchdown. Um, but we don't know anything. At Tennessee right now, people are fired up about what Pruitt's doing. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I get that. Without seeing these teams at all, this is just based off national bias. Notre Dame plus 11 and a half at Georgia. Whew. Okay, that sounds right. I was about to say it has to be the game at Georgia for them to be catching 11 and a half points. You, you want one that's going to shock you? Okay. Auburn minus three and a half at Texas A&M. Isn't this one of those series where the road team always wins? Usually, except last year, Auburn won at home. The Auburn and that was the first home. time that yeah. the, the home team had actually won. That shocks me because you know how much I'm up on Jimbo. Yeah, I know. I, I, Michigan <sighs> minus six at Wisconsin. I'll so the Wolverines. All, I'll take all those points from Jimbo in that game too. Way on Michigan minus six at Wisconsin. Yeah, I have no idea what to expect with Wisconsin. They got a new quarterback coming in. Yeah, and um, you know we got no idea. They just don't. I mean, if if they're running the ball like they normally do and they don't fumble it like they did last year, then they'll be good. Especially at home. Like, if that's a night game at Camp Randall, you know how that goes. That's right. Ohio State minus seven at Nebraska in week five. 
you and I were either going to get crushed by Nebraska people or we're going to just be disgustingly right. Why is all this Nebraska love so big? Where does this come from? Scott Frost. I know what Scott Frost did, but he's not magic. No, I know. Like, you can't just, like, wiggle your nose and make shit happen. That's not how this works. I agree. You can go to a smaller conference and take a bad team and flip it real fast. Yeah. You don't. Kind of hard to do that in the Big Ten. You don't go to a power conference, and I'm not talking Pac 12, Big 12. Sorry, guys. You don't go to one of the three big boys that's been putrid for a decade. I mean, maybe not that bad for a decade. They've been bad. They've been, they've been really bad. They've been bad. Especially under Mike Riley. And then flip a switch and say, we've got all this talent and we're going to compete for the national championship. Yeah. Now, Ohio State, does this come from? Ohio State is favored, but it's only by seven. So, either way, USC minus seven and a half at Washington. USC love is all over this thing. This is uh, hold on. This that, has got to be backwards. Right. That's not. It can't. It can't be right. Now Washington is supposed to be favored. Yeah. No. 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 It's That's USC. At Washington. Chris Peterson yeah. at home. Come it's on. USC plus seven and a half. Okay. At Washington. All right. You sure you didn't have that Stanford number wrong too? It may be. I don't think so. No, because the Oklahoma numbers, right? I mean, all the rest of these make sense. I think that one's. If that's that, I'm going to take all those points. Yeah, and, I believe that. And that's going to be a house note. Yeah, because then the very next week, they've got USC plus 11.5 at Notre Dame. Is Washington supposedly betting? No, because you said Washington was favored to win every game this year. Remember? That's a, Yeah, that's what I was saying. That, that can't be right. be right. So USC plus 11.5 at Notre Dame. Uh, Washington has Jacob Eason and, yeah. and that whole thing. No, now, Washington's going to be good. Uh, USC plus 11.5 at Notre Dame. I, I think that sounds about right. Yeah, That sounds reasonable uh florida minus three and a half at lsu florida favored at lsu there's a lot of florida love right now i know i know dan mullins yeah that bothers me it'll probably blow up we'll see i hope it's that way alabama minus 13 at texas a&m that's that's fine reasonable there's no number that alabama would be favored against any team that would shock me Oklahoma minus 11 and a half versus Texas. That one surprises me. That's a because lot Texas of points. Because Texas has been playing them close really. And Texas beat them a lot. Yeah. Like, I mean, they kind of. 11 and a half seems like a ton of points. Yeah, that's too many. That's, that's too many. That's crazy. Oregon minus six and a half. Uh, or sorry, plus six and a half at Washington. That's fine. Michigan minus six and a half at Penn State. That's fine. At Penn State, uh, that's, that's high. It's I a little high, I but getting, I think but I have no idea what to expect from Penn State. I mean, Trace McSorley's gone. Which, I mean, you're replacing, you know, a, you know, an all-time good quarterback and uh, a lot of offensive talent over the last two years. Washington Week Eight is Washington State uh, plus four and a half at Oregon. I love Mike Leach. I agree. Auburn plus seven and a half at LSU. <sighs> yeah, at the half point would scare me. It's weird that Auburn is favored. At A and M, but a, a, over a touchdown dog at LSU. Yeah, it's a little strange. Doesn't make any sense. Um, Tell me they don't know what they think of Auburn. Texas plus two and a half at TCU. I would love for Gary Patterson to be right and back. Yeah. So either they think Texas is not going to be nearly as good as they were last year. Vegas thinks that. Not me. Don't yell at me. Or <laughs> sorry, Gary, sorry, Texas. Our, people. our Gary's going. Our, our Gary Patterson's going to be back. Yeah. And I mean, remember TCU like has owned Texas other than this past season. So they were all time bad this year. That, yeah. that has to be the worst team Gary Patterson's ever had. Yeah, you're probably right. Notre Dame plus eight and a half at Michigan. Man, that's a lot of points. I don't think they expect Notre Dame to be very good I was about this year. To say Notre Dame must be falling eleven and I mean, a half they, against. Uh, they've returned a lot of I was about to say. talent though. I don't though, know but, why they won't be good. Well, no, it's it, you know what. Vegas loves Michigan in the preseason. They always have. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Uh, Wisconsin plus nine at Ohio State. We'll try and roll through the rest of these. That's big. Week nine, Georgia minus four against Florida. That's, that's in small. Jacksonville. That's kind of tiny. This is Dan Love. Dan, Dan Mullins is getting some love. I believe that Utah plus three at Washington. That's kind of a short that's, line. That's a short line, but Utah is one of those tough teams. They don't know. Yeah, they really always play, play like Washington. Typical, tough. They don't play typical Pac 12 football. Yeah. Oregon plus one and a half at USC. I think Oregon's good. I think Oregon's going to be real good this year. I'm not scared at all. 
of them falling off. Miami plus one and a half at Florida State. I, that shocks I me. Did. I don't know anything about Miami. I know this. Florida State was a trash fire last year. They might have gotten some of they. They might have gotten rid of some of the trash. They okay, that's fine. But are they just going to flip a switch and just be, you know, back to old or uh, Florida State? I'll tell you this: they uh, they hired Kendall Bryles to be their offensive coordinator, and his offense is like. Yeah. They, they do flip the switch. No, I mean, yeah, well, they've got a whole offset. It's not like he's coming in in the middle of a year trying to install something. Yep. So they'll be ready for it. Week 10, LSU plus 17 at Alabama. That doesn't surprise me. I, go ahead. I, that's it. That doesn't surprise me. No number against Bama would shock me, unless they're a little. Iowa plus five and a half at Wisconsin? That's fine. It's less than touchdown. Georgia minus nine at Auburn? That's That's too high. I, I think I agree with that. Michigan State plus 13 at Michigan. That's too high. Week 12, UCLA plus 6 at USC. Who cares? A&M plus 15 and a half at Georgia. That's a lot of points. Yeah, I agree. And but Jimbo, I hope I can get some of these lines. TC, well, you can right now, but online. Just, just letting you know. I don't know that you that. can get them down in Tunica right I'm now. Not, but I'm not doing that. TCU plus 21 at Oklahoma. That's too many. Penn State plus 10.5 at Ohio State. I have no idea what Penn State's going to look like, so I don't know. No clue. Texas Tech plus 3 at Texas. Uh, we have no clue what no to think clue. About. I don't know yeah. what Texas Tech's going to look like at all. Washington State plus 7 at Washington. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that should be all right. It's a touchdown, game. It's rivalry a touchdown game. And one team is nationally ranked, the other team's probably not. Cincinnati plus 11.5 at Memphis. Maybe too many points. I don't know what Cincinnati looks like, but they usually play tough. Well, and, uh, Cincinnati was ranked top twenty-five last year. Last year, that's what I, I don't know what they're going to look like. Are they going to have some guys that they lose? They have some seniors last year. I don't know the answer to that. I know this: they're well coached, um, and they're a tough team. In the last three lines that are out, Ohio State plus six and a half at Michigan. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Anything Alabama a touchdown would have been crazy. Alabama minus fourteen at Auburn. That's fine. Week fifteen, Army minus ten against Navy. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. That's a whole lot. All right, finish up college football talk. Let's talk about David Beatty for a minute. Okay. Have you heard about him suing Kansas? I have not. So he is suing the school to get his $3 million buyout. Okay. He's probably owed that. Because they they will not pay it to him. The reason being, during exit interviews, one of the assistant coaches revealed a possible NCAA violation. Bad bullshit. So all this stuff is coming through, and now Jeff Long, former Arkansas AD, yep. has got the NCAA on campus looking into football and basketball. Not good, it's right? Not good. It's that a bad is, look for for that yeah, that program. You can't you can't do that. All these schools that try to get out of paying the damn coaches. Look, if you fire somebody, fire them, but you got to pay them. Yeah. The contracts are what they are. That's just I don't the way it goes. like that the contracts are one sided. I don't like that the coach can up and leave with no penalty whatsoever. But if you fire him, if you want to leave the relationship, you owe him everything. But that's the way it is. I don't yeah. like it. But you didn't have to give him that big of a that's contract. Right. You gave him a big contract. God knows why. You know. No no proof that he was going to be good or anything. Good at all. But either way, is what it is. Uh let's move into let's let's talk about Johnny Manziel for a minute. Okay. You've seen this, right? Yeah, come on now. Johnny Football in Memphis. In Memphis, baby. I'm excited. I was so glad he got here. They had the press conference today. And this, we're recording this on, uh, what, Tuesday, Tuesday, March 19th. It is 8 o'clock. So uh, the, the press conference didn't really nah. give you anything surprising. No, no, no. It's fine. Uh, they did not announce that he's going to be the starter for the Memphis Express. But that's because they haven't even had a full practice. I was about to say, I don't know. Like, we're doing the tournament thing this weekend, yeah, Thursday and Friday, in in, in Samstown, and then Saturday you're planning on going to the game. I, I I'm going to tell you this: I don't think. He's well, I think the starting week one. I think the game is Sunday, right? Is it Sunday or Saturday? Yeah, I think it's Sunday. It's the 24th. I thought that was Saturday, but anyway, I think it's I think it's Sunday. And so, um, but I, I think I, I I will I'll make this prediction: I don't think he starts. I think he plays. Maybe. Maybe. Menberger being down. 
Been that whole don't help. Since. And then Hackenberg, they have completely well, no, just – Yeah, he can't play. You can't yeah. put him back on the field. No. Like, you just go wishbone or a wildcat or something. Yeah, you got to do something else because that Hedberg was – can't – I mean, Hackenberg can't, can't touch the field again. You lose the locker room. Yeah. Uh, um, Menzel, as far as selling tickets and oh, hype, right. th- this is the best thing that has happened to that franchise. Will period. Will CBS start picking up some of these games and not just CBS Sports and the NFL Network? Well, the actual net because a couple of games have been on CBS. So I think the is only only the first game was on CBS. It was. Is that the only one? Yeah, that was the only one. Well, it was two games at well, once. It was simulcast. Once the tournament's over, which I guess the tournament's going to run the next three weeks, so they don't need to worry about it. Yeah. <clears throat> My question is, once the tournament's over, what else is your programming, CBS? I mean, really? Nothing. I mean, there's a lot of golf on, but if you don't well, have maybe, a major so, weekend, then... Well, if, if Memphis finds a way to get into the playoffs, which yeah. we'll, um, we'll see... Um, They're pretty bad right now. That's why they got Johnny. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's the only reason that they got him because San Antonio didn't want him, and Memphis had the worst record. Had so the first wait, there's four weeks left in the season. Thanks, Memphis is one and five. That's the way it goes. Um, I I think this will do one. Like he wants to be back in the NFL so bad. Johnny Manzo wants to be in the NFL. I think he will treat this seriously. He'll come in and have fun and and. Play the right way, I think. But you know, it, it it's so easy to make jokes about him. That's right. It's but, like slow hanging fruit. It's an easy joke. But like I I would like to see him succeed. Right? Not just because he's in Memphis, but just yeah. because like this is somebody that obviously had a problem. And you want to see people do better for themselves. Yeah. No, I mean he's exciting to watch. He's yeah. a lot of fun. Um I'm 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 pumped to watch him in Memphis, and uh, I think this year, the rest of the season, whenever he starts, I think obviously by next week, I think he's definitely playing. Um, and then, uh, and then maybe one full season in the AF, and yeah, then, uh, and then maybe an NFL team takes a chance on him that off season. I could get down with it. I can get down you know, with. There's it. plenty of teams that need quarterbacks. No, they they always do, don't they? Uh, let's talk about NFL free agency to close this thing out. Uh, maybe I'm not doing anything. All right, let's move on. What what you got for NFL free agency? Well, I didn't really know where you wanted to start, where you wanted to to go, what teams. Th- there aren't a whole lot of players that make noise, but the ones that make noise and the teams that make noise, I think, are exciting. Okay. Um, the most exciting team that has made the most noise was my Cleveland Browns. Hundred percent, hundred percent, making the big time deal to get Odell Beckham, and all of the. Tweets and gifts and everything else going out of Baker and Odell and Jarvis, Nick Chubb, they uh, Kareem Hunt. They, they went and got Kareem Hunt. This offense is pretty damn complete. Yeah, they did a side by side comparison. Somebody put up of what the team looked like just two years ago, and then what it's going to look like this year, based on just what they have right now, offensively. And it's kind of remarkable. I think you just go ahead and even if it blows up and it doesn't work out, and let's say they go like, you know, when six is, and ten. When is the NFL schedule reveal? I don't know, but it really pisses me off and it takes too long. So the NFL does things in say like this week or last week, sometime they released all the games that are gonna be played. So like yeah, I knew you that. know what teams you're playing. So the Browns know who they're playing on the road and who they're playing at home. Well, the reason I'm asking this question is, and, and they probably do the schedule reveal after the draft, after right? After the draft. So that way they can showcase. They, they always, like, they just try to string things out. But it's a damn schedule, man. Just tell yeah. us when, who's going to play where. That's all Well, they're, right they're trying to get it set up to see who plays on Monday night, who plays on Thursday night. That's not that hard. I'm with you, but you also want to schedule teams that you know are going to be big-time national draws, like... The Browns now. I get it. You're going to have the Browns on Thursdays. You're going to have them on on well, Sunday night football. You're going to have them on Monday. Nothing's going to happen in this draft that's going to change who gets what. Unless they they're afraid like a big trade's going to happen. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Okay, that's fine. I'm ready to know because the the well, Browns there's deserve, be, there's the a Browns ton deserve, of people. The Browns deserve primetime football. That that's what I'm prime saying. Primetime football has not been in Cleveland in a long time. They get every three years, I think, or whatever. They've gotten the home. Th- everybody has to play a Thursday night yeah. game. 
but they've been on the road the last couple of times. And that's not real true prime time. I guess it is. But, but I mean, they had the Jets at home on a Thursday night this year, and they got yeah. their first win in forever. Right. Yeah. But so but they get they get they deserve a Monday night or a Sunday night game. They deserve a real prime time. And I I year. guarantee you they will get one of those this year. Guarantee that. The other side of this is people want to see Kyler Murray, right? They are going to want to see that because he's going to get drafted early, and people want to be able to watch this kid. That, I don't know so, if they're going to be a lot of prime time, dude. You can. Well, say no, no, no. At the, like, but but they'll probably have Arizona, him on early. If Arizona takes him, they're not going to get a lot of prime time. They're just not. No, no, no. People it, not a lot. To see Baker, but they didn't. They didn't give him Baker last year. No, but they had him early in the season on a Thursday night. So you put Kyler Murray in that same exact situation. He didn't even start that game. And no, they didn't know they were going to get him that game. Well, no, but they they thought once he was drafted that he was going to right. They they set it up for that kind of stuff, and no, it doesn't always work out. But that's why they set those up, right? Yeah. No, they nobody Arizona, in the NFL Arizona, Arizona won't get a Sunday night or Monday night game, and they don't deserve one. Nobody believed that Hugh Jackson was dumb enough to not start Baker Mayfield, and then he was, and I then he got think, fired. I, I thought it was the right move. I I, I don't think it mattered. I think Hugh was such an anchor there. Yeah. I've never seen a team just have so much lifted off of them when one guy left. No, I agree. Um, but, no, I, I, we disagree on the Kyler Murray thing. I think people are excited to watch him. They will not be, other than their Thursday night game, they will not be on a single primetime game. This year. And, and you might be it right. It doesn't matter where he goes. No matter where he gets drafted. Well, maybe uh, That's not true. That's just not true. If he gets drafted by Arizona, they will not be. Now, if he goes to a, a big exciting place, I don't know. People might the Giants he'll definitely get it. They they might want to try and put Cliff Kingsbury out there. No, it's not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. They're going to do it. They put the good teams that are going to be good games on there. I'm really upset this year's the first year because it's the hundred year anniversary of the league, and so they want to showcase the two. Is this really? Teams. Yeah. Uh, can't be because they just did like a fifty year thing. No, that it's can't be big, right. It's some big anniversary, which is why. They're not doing the Super Bowl winner always hosts the Thursday night game to open the season. Okay? Okay. It's happened ever since they started Thursday night football opening the season. This year they're doing away with that, and they're letting the Bears and the Packers host it because it's some big anniversary. I thought somebody said it was 100 years of football maybe, not the NFL. Well, it's this is 150 years of college football. No, no, no. But it's got to be something different. It, it has to do something with either pro football or – which I think is too old. I don't think it's that old, but maybe it is. I don't know. I, for some reason, I thought it was just a big – I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> anyway, I, I haven't gotten that deep into the NFL yet. But uh, but but I, but anyway, I digress. Schedule-wise, it's, it's very upsetting that the Patriots aren't going to be opening that Thursday night game. My – only excitement would be the Patriots do get the Browns as one of their home games this year. And okay. maybe Sunday night football says, oh, you're not taking them Thursday, which it's NBC. NBC has both games. NBC says, all right, we'll snag that for the Sunday night game. The Patriots, Browns will open the season with them on prime. Because the Patriots have earned – winning the Super Bowl gets you that, that limelight, that spotlight. That makes sense. It's just what you've earned having it. So I think – if they were smart, they would put them on the Patriot game, either Sunday night or Monday night football. That doesn't satisfy my quench. I'm ready for Cleveland to have a prime time game in, in Cleveland. Cleveland. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, we have gone for an hour and twenty three minutes. Any free agency? That's fine. Just just run through. No, we'll, we'll do. A whole we do it next show. week. We'll do a whole other show when we're not going through brackets and other stuff. That's a good call. No, no, more free agents will come. Some change might happen. And None you already got your list ready. I've already got my list ready. I like that. I like that. All right. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We know that the feed was a little choppy. Sorry uh, about that. I will, I will delete this original feed and post this other one back up uh, because we've actually got it recorded. So if you want to come back and listen to it, we'll have the podcast up later, et cetera, et cetera. As always, share out the show. Leave some nice reviews, five-star written reviews. Tell everybody how much you love us. Uh, leave comments, subscribe on YouTube, subscribe to the podcast, click like on Facebook, follow on Twitter, all the wonderful things. Help us out, man. We'll see you March 21st, March 22nd. Sam's Town Casino in Tunica. And we're actually spending the night there on Thursday night. Yeah, I'm not coming home. I ain't coming home either. I think we, we might drink a little bit that evening. 
Might have a few tasty beverages. Maybe. That's, this is not a maybe. If you're coming out, we're going to have a drink with you. It's going to be a good time. We can't wait. March 21st, March 22nd, Samstown Casino in Tunica for the NCAA tournament. We will see you guys then. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.